How's it going, everybody out there? Let me ask you a question. When you hear the term successful agent, what comes to your mind? You imagine yourself retired, feeling good, no aches and pains, enjoying the fruits of your labor, living a healthy, prosperous life with your friends and your family and your grandkids. If you're not thinking that way, then you're thinking the wrong way. So, you know, aging, it's a beautiful part of life's process. And You know, we really want to take in what life has to offer and especially once we retire and we get into that age where, you know, we're trying to figure out new things to do. We're getting into that next chapter. We don't have to worry about work anymore. You know, we want to make sure that we have three components that we're really looking after in order to be successful when it comes to aging. And those three components are physical health, cognitive health, and of course, emotional and social health. So we're going to get into that. And if you have all three of these in check, then you're going to be aging very, very fruitful. So what do you think the definition of a successful aging is? I'm going to read it word for word. A successful aging basically means having high cognitive and physical abilities in old age while also experiencing life with family and friends. So this basically means you're growing older without any disabilities or disease while maintaining active and healthy relationships with your loved ones, okay? More than 35% of Adults age 65 and older experience mobility limitations, which basically affects their independence and quality of life. And over 25% of people are battling mental health um, challenges, whether it's anxiety, whether it's dementia, depression, and many more, um, unfortunately. Um, And these challenges present a lower chance of aging well. So if you like the idea and the concept of successful aging, Let's go into why it's important that you age successfully and going over those three components that I mentioned before. Now, what more could you ask for as you age and maintaining good physical and mental health and a good social life? And imagine it's basically achieving successful aging where you have good mental and physical health and social participation. These are the benefits that you would get from that. You would get optimal quality of life independence and autonomy, reduced health care burden, so you're not going to be going to the doctors as often because you need healthy, social connections and support, financial security, positive role modeling, right? We want to set an example for the generations before us to also age successfully so that they can live a long and prosperous life with their friends, family, and loved ones. All right, now let's go over the three components that go into successful aging as I mentioned before. And the first one we're going to be talking about is physical well-being. So while it's normal in the aging process to experience a decline in physical function, successful aging refers to a life where there are little to no diseases, as mentioned before, or disabilities hindering your quality of life. Okay, so taking care of your physical well-being, it can help you promote longevity, reduce the risk of any age-related chronic diseases and enhance overall quality of life. So that's why that component is very important. And we're gonna go over the next two as well. All right, the next component we're gonna be talking about is cognitive health or cognitive function. And we've been hearing that term a lot more recently, especially when we're talking about some of our political leaders, unfortunately, it's a sad situation. Um, But preserving our cognitive abilities um, is very crucial for uh, successful aging. Um, engaging in activities that challenge the mind, such as puzzles, um, reading, um, learning new skills, uh, socializing, all that can help keep the mind nice and sharp. Note that your physical health, outlook on life, and engagement with life play a crucial role in determining the strength um, of your mind, basically, as you grow older. So that's why those two components fit together. And now we're going to talk about the third. And the third component we're talking about now is the emotional and social well-being. Um, Positive social relationships actually have been associated with longer and healthier lives. And when it comes to being socially isolated, as we found out over the past few years, um, it stems to a lot of loneliness, a lot of depression, and actually it's linked to um, high risk of dementia. So uh, that's why it's very important to be very social. Um, It can cause a lot of other serious health problems. Additionally, uh, maintaining strong relationships with families 
and friends who are participating in social activities and basically staying connected to the community, it can contribute to a sense of purpose, number one, um, belonging, and then overall emotional well-being. So that's why the three of those together really go hand in hand. And now we're going to talk about how to basically um, imply each of those into your life and how to strengthen each of those components. All right, now we are going to go over how to age successfully by using those three components that we just discussed. The first one we're going to be talking about is basically how to improve on your physical well-being. So these are things that are obvious. These are things that we've heard time and time over again, but it's good to go over it just as a reminder. We want to make sure that we're engaging in res regular physical exercise, such as walking, swimming, uh, strength training is very important as well. Uh, we need to maintain strength, especially as we get older. Flexibility and cardiovascular health, also very important. Of course, we want to adapt a balanced and nutritionist, a nutritional diet uh, that basically includes our fruits, our vegetables, our healthy carbs, our healthy fats, a good source of protein. This is all important as well. And of course, we need to get sufficient sleep to not only support our overall health and well-being, but also to recover and make sure that we're uh, re-energized for the next day ahead. All right, now with the cognitive health, right? So this, we want to make sure that we stay mentally active by engaging in activities that challenges the mind, right? That's very important. Like I mentioned before, such as the puzzles, the reading, uh, learning new skills, um, or even playing memory games. There's a ton of them online that you can find. There's even like uh, senior clubs out there that you can join that, that they do this on a daily basis. Maintain social connections and participation um, in social activities. Uh, this stimulates cognitive function and it actually helps prevent isolation. We also want to make sure that we're managing our stress levels very well. Um, and we want to do this by using some relaxation techniques, uh, mindfulness activities, or engaging in hobbies that basically promote mental well-being. Another thing is to seek regular cognitive checkups with your healthcare professionals. Um, this way they can monitor any cognitive health um, and then possibly address any concerns proactively as opposed to reactively, okay? And last but not least, the third component is the emotional and social well-being. And we're going to see how this ties into the two that we already mentioned. So you want to make sure to cultivate and maintain a strong relationship with family, friends, and the community, right? Um, participate in social activities, clubs, or organizations that align with personal interests, um, and also provide opportunities uh, for social engagement. You want to make sure to have good friends and always try to keep and pick some good friends, right? And keep them around you. Um, also prioritize mental health by seeking support, as mentioned before, when needed, um, whether through therapy, counseling, or support groups. So you can see they're similar, but a little bit different, but they do tie together. Um, and then, of course, you want to engage in activities that bring joy and fulfillment, such as hobbies, volunteering, um, or basically pursuing creative um, um, outlets so that you have something to do throughout the day. And again, practice some really good self-care and stress management techniques, uh, just like I mentioned before, such as mindfulness activities, meditation you can throw in there as well, um, or basically engage in activities that promote relaxation and well-being, okay? Even if it's just sitting in a quiet, dark room listening to some really great music, that is a great way to basically have some stress relief, stress, stress management. I know that's one thing I do and it helps out tremendously. So just remember, successful aging is a holistic approach um, that encompasses those three components that we just talked about. Remember, there's no one size fits all. Um, everybody has their own idea of basically how to be successful when it comes to aging. Um, but like I said, with these three components in place and you work on them daily, it will assure a more fulfilling um, and rewarding senior life. So this is very important, especially as we're aging and getting older. We want to be around as long as possible. So I don't know about you, but I want to live a long and prosperous life and get as much from this life as I possibly can. So I've already started practicing and strengthening those three components. I'm not even 40 yet, 
but it's never too early to start. It's never too late to start. Start immediately. Work on those three components. It's stuff that you do every day anyway. Being physically active, eat healthier on a more normal schedule, and work on things that are going to strengthen your mind, whether it's reading or learning a new skill or any of those other things that I mentioned. Okay, so if you like videos like this, like and, this, like and subscribe to the channel and follow along and we'll see you on the next one. Coach Mark out.